So they disposed of Afrimat, which was one of their largest investments. They they achieved a internal rate of return, so an IRR of 28% on the investment in Afrimat. Got in at the right time, got out at the right time. If that doesn't speak to experience and management knowing what they're doing, I don't know what is. Hello everyone and welcome to the Finmail podcast and yet another episode of Stock Savvy, a series where we investigate a single stock on the JSE and we look at everything. What does the company do, its valuation, its bullish cases, bearish cases, management, everything we can think of. And we are joined by an expert guest. Today <laughs> we are joined by the one and only Soul Financial, uh, Rochelle Warriors. Welcome to the channel, Rochelle. Super am to have you here. Thank you so much, Paul. It has been a while we've been trying to do this. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. So before we get into the grit of things, uh, I think our, our readers and our listeners and our viewers are very uh, interested to, to hear about the company that you're going to uh, present to us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your your journey into investments and where you're at at the moment. Okay, so I am, I always start by saying I'm a mom, okay? Before anything else, I'm a mom. And my daughter actually sparked my interest in investing because when she was born, you know, I knew I needed to, you know, I needed to build something for her. So I've been investing for around 15 years now. Um, mostly on the JSE, but for the past, you know, six, seven years, I've also been investing in the U.S. stock market. I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I also have my, um, you know, my postgrad in certified financial planning. So yeah, that is me. I love the stock market. Um, you know, I love building wealth. I love simplifying finances for the average person. Yeah. Yeah. I, I even your content that you creates on this. She's also a fun male mentor, by the way, everyone. Um, I think you the second or the first most followed mentor on the <laughs> app. So your content is great. I love your content. So what Thank I like about you. Michelle, guys, is she writes liquor, man. Like, it's <laughs> almost like he's chatting to you. It doesn't seem like it's an academic <laughs> article. But anyway, so Rochelle, today we're chatting all things African Rainbow Capital. Yes. Of course, another holding company. Last week, we chatted to Josh for you and we covered Sabfest. This time we cover African Rainbow, and I know this has been one of your go-to stocks for the last three years. It's up almost 100% over the last three years, so you've made some money. Uh, tell us about <laughs> the company. I absolutely love African Rainbow Capital. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of holding companies, but I do believe if you know what you are doing and with holding companies, you know, for those who don't know, a holding company is simply a company that holds investments in other companies, okay? So as I always say, with a holding company, you need to know what you own. And it's a see-through, we call it a see-through valuation. You have to go through African Rainbow Capital over to your crops, um, which is a phosphate mine, into rain, which is in the telecommunication space, into Alexander Forbes, which is financial services into Time Bank, you know, who has a lot of customers who's signing up about 150,000 new customers every month. So there's Uber, there's a whole lot of companies inside the African Rainbow stable. And to invest in African Rainbow Capital, you absolutely have to know what does African Rainbow Capital invest in and what is their investment strategy? Do they just randomly pick companies? Or do they actually have a strategy of how they are spending the money inside the fund? So what I love about African Rainbow Capital is firstly the investment team, the executive team who's making the decisions. Yeah, we're we talking Patrice Mutsepe. People do not become billionaires by accident, okay? Patrice knows what he's doing. The other person that I really love who's in the executive team is Johan van Sel. Now, Johan is an expert investor, a very successful investor. And I mean, you know, if you just look at, at his track record, I mean, people can make their own conclusions. Um, so when you are investing in an investment holding company, you are investing in the management team. Make sure that you understand. It's sometimes very difficult for investors to understand how these companies make money, um, Paul. And it's management fees, okay? The one thing that absolutely stood out for me 
over in the last set of financials that African Rainbow Capital put out was that the management fee went down from 115 million to 37 million. And that is how that management team is actually unlocking the value between the net asset value of the shares and the value that the share is trading at on the stock exchange because those are two different values. The companies are valued at the net asset value, but it's trading at a different price. And historically, most people, if you are a Remgro investor or you are an Aspaz investor or a process, process investor, what frustrates a lot of investors is that I could just hold 10 cent or, you know, I could just hold, you know, the underlying share myself and it would be trading at a higher price. Um, so there's always a discount to the net asset, to the, to, the, to the share price. And you need to understand what is causing that. And what Johan van Sale came out and said was they are targeting. Currently, it's trading at a 30% discount. For the year 2023, African Rainbow is actively targeting a 10 to 20% discount to the share price, wow. which means they are doing things inside the company. The first thing that they're doing is this management fee because that's trapping value. The second thing that they're doing and that I absolutely agree with is they are selling off non-core assets or assets that have reached their maturity, which means investors are not going to see exponential growth on those assets anymore. So they disposed of Afrimat, which was one of their largest investments. They they achieved a internal rate of return, so an IRR of 28% on the investment in Afrimat. Got in at the right time, got out at the right time. If that doesn't speak to experience, and management knowing what they're doing, I don't know what is. I see. So yeah, management is super important in a holding company because essentially you're trusting them with your money and say, okay, you make the calls for me on my behalf. Yes. And these guys have been doing it very well. And they're not, you know, they're not the, the little leagues. These guys um, have been in the in the business for quite a, quite a th- quite some time. Yes. So let's chat about the underlying holdings quickly because that's okay. that's obviously the most important. So what are the three or four biggest holdings and more or less what percentage do they, do they um, in, include in, in the portfolio? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the top three, okay, for, for me. And, and I think it's also the, the most interesting ones. Um, by far the largest investment, and it's also the investment that African Rainbow Capital gets the most criticism for, is for RAIN, Okay. Now, if you live in South Africa, you have to know who Rain is. It's the new telecom. It's no longer new, <laughs> but it's it's the telecommunications. Um, you know, it's it's the new giant in telecommunications. Rain is a data. You know, it's a data network. Um, they are they building an LTE infrastructure around South Africa. What makes Rain a bit different from your MTNs and your, you know, and and your Vodacoms is Rain is focusing. They they have put excessive focus on the rural areas, the areas that is currently underserved. Okay, now if you if you think about this, you know it it. And, and it, it might be a little bit technical, but I'm not a, I'm not a technical person. I'm an accountant, people. So, but what they are doing is they're trying to get to the lower frequencies into into radio frequencies into the into the rural areas to get people to get more internet to everybody in South Africa. Okay. Now, obviously, they started and they piggybacked off other off other telcos. You know. And there's been some criticism for that, you know, rain is not performing, you know, because people are used to MTN to the fast speeds, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to now also remember that you are investing in an infant. You're not investing, you're investing in a future giant. So I see. if either you like it or you don't like it, there's no right or wrong here is you read up about it and you're like, you know, I like what rain is doing. They're investing heavily heavily into infrastructure because south africa is huge if you've ever driven in rural areas i mean it is massive to get connectivity to everybody in this country is not going to be an easy task so the government has set very clear targets 
for you know for what they want to achieve in terms of internet co connectivity around the entire country and for me rain is a front runner in that on the on the negative side you know um when it comes to the valuation of rain rain is not a publicly listed company the only way that we can invest in rain is through african rainbow capital investments what a lot of investors have been criticizing you know and and it's also something that i am personally looking at all the time is the valuation of rain is how do they get to that massive 3.7 billion rand valuation for rain what are the inputs because if you are looking at valuation the only thing you can do is take cash flows and discount them to a value today okay now investors where the caution comes in is they are they can't see the inputs into the valuation so if you cannot see it you cannot trust it so that's where but the thing what what where my comfort comes from and it's not absolute comfort because you know we have seen auditors fail is that they stress test these valuations if you have cash flows you know um that you predict that rain is going to make or let's say it's a 10 year discounted cash flow you know they will take those cash flows and they will stress test it they will increase it by 10% decrease it by 10% and look at what happens to the valuation and the auditors will come up with the fairest valuation for that company whether you believe it at the end of the day or not will determine if you put your money into this company or not the the yeah, very interesting okay. I just wanted to ask you if you have any questions on rain because I want to go over to crops. No, I think yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll post something on the FAMIAP app uh, just discussing rain a little bit. But yeah, like you said, just in terms of the valuation, uh, just for the for the listener, so a private company, it's like the management almost values that company. Okay, yes. is, it's not like a thumbs up value, but of course, like there's auditors and all of that. But you don't. It's not the market. It's the management team, so they can overvalue yes. the share. Yes, and that's what sometimes. Does yes, there's, there's not a so in the remember on a stock exchange there's a willing buyer willing seller concept is if I want to sell it at six rand and you want to buy it at six rand that's the fair value of the share and that's what it's going to trade at but with an unlisted company there is no willing buyer willing seller so the the management needs to use a valuation methodology to come up with a and and the thing is a lot of the things that goes into a valuation is not public information like you know the discount rate that they use to to discount the shares at which is called the weighted average cost of capital i mean that's a made up number and that number just by changing it by 1% you can change a valuation by hundreds of millions of rands yeah the whack is by far the most important input there <laughs> yes but anyway okay so let's let's continue uh, the other okay. two big ones Okay, so we're gonna we can let's go over to crops because crops is a very exciting company. Crops is in phosphate mining. Okay, it's in South Africa and in the DRC. Um, phosphate is for for those who don't know why is phosphate important. If there's no phosphate, we will have no food. Okay, it's one of the most. It's a fertilizer, which means it's one of the most important things for food security in the world okay so russia is by far the largest exporter of phosphate on the planet we all know what's happening with russia right now yeah. um you know the war is still ongoing i mean some of the countries are you know like softening the the sanctions against russia but food security is very important especially in africa where we need healthy crops you know because we have a really large population to feed and we have a food problem on the continent now crops the the one very exciting thing is crops has delivered their first 30000 tons of phosphate it was in development for the longest time african rainbow capital invested in crops i think in 2018 and it's been in development and there has been significant delays and this is one of the of those investments that has been dragging for african rainbow capital because it's a startup and with a startup and a mine when it is pre production you know or pre you know, it, it it hasn't produced yet then 
you don't know what you don't know. You don't know, are you going to make 30,000 tons? Are you going to make 100,000 tons? What are you going to make? So I'm very relieved. The first 30,000 tons was mined and delivered and sold in January. I'm going to wait for the next set of wow. results to come out to see. So, so crops is over the line in terms of producing phosphate. Um, the, the, just on the, on the flip side of that, we just need to remember that crops needs to, ne still needs a lot of money for development, okay, and investment into infrastructure. Remember, there's a huge barrier to entry when it comes to mining, is you need a lot of money for minings, and you always, as an investor, ask yourself, where is that money going to come from? is if crops needs more money, where's the money going to come from? The other thing that really derailed crops, and we need to be fair, was Transnet. Okay, Transnet is a is 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 the bane of, of our existence in South Africa. Anybody who has investments in Tungela or Exaro or any mining mm. company, if if your product cannot go to the port, the company cannot recognize the sale. Okay, so Transnet has been really, really dragging down a lot of mining companies in South Africa. Um, so I just wanted to go back to rain. I just want investors to know that 2023 rain is expected to make 2 billion rand in EBITDA. Okay. And that's a massive number. So we nope. need to, we need to watch the numbers and we need to keep management honest because they told us 2 billion in EBITDA. Okay. So if we see that number coming through by the end of the year, it, it, it speaks to speaks to the management team. Before we go over to Time Bank, everybody's favorite in the African Rainbow um, in the African Rainbow Stable. Do you have any questions on crops for me? Uh, for now, good to go. Good to go to um, to the next okay. one. Okay. Okay. So Time Bank, and this is I'm going to start off because there has been rumors on Facebook and on Twitter. That if you buy African Rainbow Capital, you are buying time. Nothing is further from the truth. Okay. I've just told you that rain makes up 27% of, and it's the by far the largest investment. Okay. Um, time Bank is only about 11% of the entire African Rainbow Capital investments. Doesn't mean it's going to stay there, but that is where it is now. So you can't go out and say, hey, I'm buying Time Bank. I'm buying Time Bank shares when I'm buying, you know, African Rainbow Capital because you're also buying Alexander Forbes and Uber and Crops. And so be very aware of what you are buying. Um, with Time Bank, we all know Time is a digital bank. It's South Africa's first bank. The total bank is in the cloud. Okay. Um, Time Bank is signing up around 130 to 160,000 customers every single month still. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really, really growing rapidly. Um, Time Bank is, um, is, is also, they, they now expanding into SME banking, into business banking. So that is in a completely new stream of revenue. Um, the, the other thing about Time Bank is because and, and I want people to know this is because Time Bank is a startup, it is going to be loss making. And be very careful. This company is in the year 20, June 2022 was the last set of results that we got from Time Bank. Time Bank made about a 980 million rand loss. Okay. Wow. And that 980 sure. million rand loss, I mean, I, I, I wrote it down earlier and I was like, what are these expenses? Because right before the operating expenses line, the company is profitable. The company is spending 150 million rand on consulting, 110 million rand on marketing, 350 million rand on outsource services. So now you have to remember time doesn't have branches. So that outsource services is you going to pick and pay to do your time banking. You going to ShopRite to do your time banking. Time is paying for those services, okay? So even if you are just paying one rand, that doesn't mean that service provider is charging time one rand for that. So the company is building a network and they're obviously still investing a lot of money into software and, and, and intangible assets. So we just need to be very careful is if you are investing in a startup, know that 
most of the expenses are startup costs. So if you are not willing to take that risk, because remember time could fail, it can fail. So you need to be very honest with yourself. Are you the type of investor who can withstand a 20, 30%, 40% drop in a share price and still sleep peacefully at night? Well, I can. If you can't, <laughs> this is not the stock for you. So I just want people to know, um, I mean, time is an amazing, I think, you know, it was the first banking license that was issued since 1999. And I think it was very needed. Capitec, um, you know, needed some competition. The more inclusive banking is in any country, the better for that country. Finish and climb. Yeah, so that was actually my, my question regarding Time Mag. Who exactly is the target market for Time Mag? Because Capitec has a very clear uh, like target market, which is like, okay, you know, the Capitec. So Time Bank, uh, it's the first digital one. So is it kind of for everyone or who are they targeting? So, you know what? Time Bank has a very, very specific marketing strategy. I don't know if you have ever noticed where Time Bank advertises. Is you won't see Time Bank advertising like... um like we Capitec advertisers. Time Bank is very focused on the the up and coming adults. Okay. So if if you look at so Capitec goes for Capitec is for the masses. Okay. They have a very clear strategy. They are fine. Their people are fine standing in queues. If you've ever seen a Capitec banking queue, you no. know those people are those people are okay waiting one hour in a in, in an ATM queue. Time bank, that's not the people time bank. Time bank is targeting the people who are addicted to this. Okay. Which is basically so everyone. People who want to do everything on their phones. People who never want to go into a branch. So I honestly believe it is Gen Z. It is Gen Z and it is the up and coming entrepreneurs of tomorrow. Um, they have a very clear strategy in terms of that. Um, so I, 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 and the thing is, you know, to still sign up 200,000 customers a month. I mean, in, in October of last year, they signed up 220,000 in one month. So, and on average, they're doing about 150,000 right now. So they are definitely reaching the people that they need to be reaching. Yeah, no, that's something to definitely keep an eye on. So, so, so the, the, the next segment is, is normally like bullish and various cases. In this case, it's a little bit weird because there's no specific company. There's, there's a, quite a few companies and there's no yes. specific sector. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's banking, it's telecommunications, all of those. So, but, but if you have to say bullish, bearish, give me the main bullish and the main bearish, uh, scenario. The main, for me now, the bullish scenario here is I would, I would say that a fair, I've been, I've been in the stock for a very long time. I've been watching the financial statements. I've been watching investments go up and down. Okay. I think a fair entry price is probably around five rand, between five rand and five rand fifty. Okay. If you are going to hold the stock for the next 10 to 15 years, you are, I believe you are going to be very, very happy. Okay. It's, it's a long term hold. This is not a company that's going to make you rich overnight because they are investing in startups and they need those startups to grow, become profitable, then pay dividends, then we get, all get rich. Okay. It goes up in value. It pays dividends. We get rich. That for me, it is. The other thing I would need people to realize is when a company has a lot of cash, you always have to ask yourself, what are they going to do next? What are they going to do with that cash? And the ARC fund is sitting on 1.2 billion in cash. What are they going to do with that money? What are they going to buy next? What are they going to grow next? So you have to ask yourself, what are they going to do with that? Do you trust this management to do something good with that cash? And I go on track record because the past has a, has a habit of repeating itself. Okay. So the bullish scenario for me is high cash. Strong management team, diversified portfolio. I, th I don't believe it's too diversified. I believe the ARC team has the ability to say when to get in and when to get out of something because they have proven that. So get in at a fair price. Don't chase the stock. Don't now when ARC goes up to 10 Rand, then you go and buy the thing because you, you're scared you're going to miss out. You literally have missed the boat by then. 
because we're telling you that you know a fair price for the share is probably between five and six rand, five rand and five rand fifty a share. It's currently trading at around six rand, I think six rand forty a share. Wait for a little bit of a pullback. You know, we are in some type of a recession. Nobody knows if the market is here or there. So let things settle. You always have time to get into something. The bearish case for me here is what if the main investments fail? What if Time Bank is an absolute failure and never and, and, and doesn't become profitable? Or what if rain doesn't succeed in what they are trying to achieve? That's the bearish scenario. Is, and, and that's why you can't invest and forget. There's no such thing. Is You have worked for your money. You've put your money in. Now respect your money enough to check up on your investments every three to six months. Check up on them. If rain's valuation goes from 3.7 billion down to two, you have to ask yourself why. And if you need to take a loss, take that loss. Don't wait for it to go further down, but make your own decision, you know. And, and if the valuation goes down and you do believe management's explanation for it because there's hard lockdown or there's another, you know, there's another catastrophe, then believe them. If you don't believe them, cut your losses and get out. So that's the bearish scenario for me is, what if they are very, very concentrated to their top three investments? And if one of them goes wrong, it could have a serious impact on this business. Wow, that's that's very interesting. I, I love what you said. So it's it's a long-term investment, but it's not quite one for the bottom drawer. You cannot just forget no, about it. Can't. You have to keep your eye on it. You Especially have to. because it's small cap stocks. Yes. Uh, private holdings. Yeah, all right. So very, very interesting. So maybe as, the, as a last question, Sol, why African Rainbow instead of something like Sabvest or Remgro or whatever. What makes this holding company something that you really like? So it for you know what uh, this is uh, this is the thing people must understand about me is I'm not an either or person. I own shares in Sabvest. I own shares in Nasbest. I don't own Remgro, but I own shares in three holding companies. I'm not an either or person. I love spreading my risk. Okay. I like all the investments that Sabvest is making. The other the thing about Sabvest is, yo, they are highly profitable, okay? I obviously like Nasbash because I've been holding it for a very long time and it's been very good. You know, it's been a very good investment because I've been holding it for over 10, 10, 11 years. African Rainbow Capital is new and I love startups. I've always said to people, I identify as a growth investor. And for me, the investments inside that stable are growth companies. And that's what attracted me. Firstly, the management team. And secondly, the investment strategy. And that's why I like African Rainbow Capital. And I'm in it for the long haul, you know. But obviously, I'm not going to be blind to their mistakes. If something goes wrong, materially wrong. Because things do go wrong, but it's not material. But if something materially goes wrong, um, I'm willing to cut my losses and say I made a mistake because investing teaches you about yourself and if it also teaches you to own up to your mistakes because it's going to cost you money by not owning up to your mistakes but this is hopefully one where I'm not wrong for the long haul I'm willing to hold on to African Rainbow Capital and I'm very excited to see what Johan and Patrice has up their sleeves next honestly yo so this was so insightful. Thank you so much uh, for, your, for your time. Everyone, let us know what you think in the comments and what you would like to see next. If the video does well and we will love Soul Financial, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, I know <laughs> she's got another pick for us, but let's not, uh, yeah. yeah let's not a holding that. company. A not, a, not a holding another company. One. No, a company <laughs> that actually makes something. <laughs> okay. All right, so so Soul, maybe we'll do this again. I really hope we, we, we get the opportunity we will. to do that. We definitely will. Um, Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you on the Fun Me Up app and follow uh, Soul Financial Resale Artists. Bye, everyone. <laughs>